Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the classification of hypertension in pregnancy. But before we start looking at the classification, let's know what hypertension in pregnancy is. And when we say hypertension in pregnancy, simply it is a disorder characterized by sustained elevated systolic blood pressure of greater than or equal to 140 millimeters of mercury and or diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal to 90 millimeters of mercury taken two consecutive times at least four to six hours apart in a previously normotensive pregnant woman okay that will do for hypertension in pregnancy now let's move on and look at the classification so with the classification, we are going to go with the old classification and along the line we would go with the new guidelines. All right, so the first of all, the hypertension in pregnancy can be classified into these four groups that we mentioned. The first one will be chronic hypertension, followed by pregnancy induced hypertension. Then we are looking at chronic hypertension superimposed by preeclampsia. And the final one is unclassified hypertension. When we say chronic hypertension, it means that the onset of the hypertension is before 20 weeks of gestation. And also, the hypertension persists beyond the puperial period. And that puperial period we are referring to six weeks postpartum, six weeks after delivery. If the hypertension persists beyond six weeks postpartum, it tells you that the hypertension was there even before the woman got pregnant. That is why we are referring to it as chronic hypertension. Let's move on and talk about pregnancy-induced hypertension. In the old style, then after that, would notify the new guidelines. So for the hypertension in pregnancy, referring, referring to the pregnancy-induced hypertension, the onset is going to be after 20 weeks of gestation. But for pregnancy-induced hypertension, it does not persist beyond the preparatory period. That is six weeks postpartum. The pregnancy-induced hypertension can be subclassified into the following. So the subclassification, we have gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, which can also be classified as mild and severe. Then we have imminent eclampsia, what we call fulminant preeclampsia, and finally eclampsia. But the current guidelines has it that currently pregnancy induced hypertension is no more used is no more used as a nomenclature the pregnancy induced hypertension is now synonymous to gestational hypertension so when you are referring to gestational hypertension you are synonymously saying pregnancy induced hypertension and for preeclampsia as a whole whether mild or severe is now reclassified as preeclampsia without severe features and the imminent eclampsia or fulminant preeclampsia is now reclassified as preeclampsia with severe features and eclampsia is still eclampsia let's talk a bit about the gestational hypertension with the gestational hypertension we are still referring to the definition of hypertension and the onset will be after 20 weeks of gestation and it will resolve within the preparatory period that is gestational hypertension but when we talk about preeclampsia preeclampsia we are looking at a disorder of widespread vascular endothelial malfunction and vasospasm that occurs after 20 weeks of gestation and resolves within the preparatory period clinically preeclampsia is defined by the hypertension and proteinuria clinically preeclampsia is defined by the hypertension and proteinuria with or without pathological edema so it tells you that with preeclampsia you are looking at hypertension occurring in that pregnancy after 20 weeks of gestation that is the onset in addition to that there is proteinuria at least 0.3 gram per 24 hours or proteinuria of one plus with or without pathological edema meaning the edema is not a mass that is what we call preeclampsia and as you know preeclampsia is a progressive disease 
it moves forward and it does not move back it is progressive in nature and what we say preeclampsia currently the new nomenclature is preeclampsia without severe features there will not be severe features and if you are looking at imminent eclampsia or fulminant preeclampsia which is now referred to as preeclampsia with severe features it means there there will be severe features and what are these severe features we are looking at symptoms of i mean frontal headaches which are usually persistent and does not respond to the normal analgesics we are looking at right upper quadrant pain epigastric pain visual disturbances we are also talking about signs of increasing hypertension we are looking at liver tenderness we are talking about increased tendon reflexes with or without clonus those are the severe features that we are talking about if they are present we are talking about preeclampsia with severe features and that is formally referred to as imminent eclampsia and finally we have eclampsia with eclampsia it will be characterized by the hypertension onset after 20 weeks of gestation there will be proteinuria and also in addition there will be seizures or fits or convulsions that is what we call eclampsia so eclampsia will come with the seizures or fits or convulsions okay let's move ahead and talk about the next one that is chronic hypertension superimposed by preeclampsia it means in this scenario the onset of the hypertension is known and is less than 20 weeks of gestation and after 20 weeks of gestation there was an evidence of proteinuria and that, that brings into the scenario of hypertension with proteinuria and that will give us preeclampsia but the hypertension occurring isolatedly before 20 weeks of gestation we will call it chronic hypertension that is what we call chronic hypertension superimposed by preeclampsia then finally unclassified hypertension and when we say unclassified hypertension it means the onset of the hypertension is unknown the hypertension may happen before or after 20 weeks of gestation but that onset is unknown it means in that scenario patient presents for hypertension after 20 weeks of gestation either at the antenatal care or at the emergency and the time of onset is unknown and in that case how do you determine the onset so as to reclassify the hypertension there are two things that can be done the first one is by looking at the serum uric acid and classically for serum uric acid to get the threshold serum uric acid you would have to multiply the gestational age by 10 and that will give you the threshold serum uric acid an example is if you take a woman whose gestational age is 30 weeks presented for hypertension after 20 weeks which you are not so sure about when the hypertension started then in that case our serum uric acid threshold will be equal to 300 that should be the threshold and if you request for serum uric acid and it comes out that the serum uric acid level is 350 then it means this is the range but on the lab you may have the normal ranging from 250 to 400 that does not mean that this serum uric acid is not elevated so you first of all have to calculate the threshold which will be the gestational age multiplied by 10 and if the serum uric acid you requested for is greater than the threshold then it means that the serum uric acid is deranged and the serum uric acid will be deranged if it is preeclampsia if it is chronic hypertension the serum uric acid will not be deranged so that would help you to determine whether it's preeclampsia or chronic hypertension and by so doing you can reclassify with the unclassified hypertension as either chronic hypertension or preeclampsia and if it's preeclampsia we said the serum uric acid will be deranged the next option is to wait until the delivery of the baby if the hypertension persists beyond the pupilla period then it means that it's chronic hypertension if it resolves within the pupilla period then we are talking about preeclampsia this brings us to the end of the classification of hypertension in pregnancy but before we end the session i have a question for you the question is why is it important to treat all opportunistic infections in hiv before starting the antiretroviral therapy leave your answers in the commentary session kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel 
like share and also comment the next concept you would like to see in my next video my name is dr Dell, and once again this is concept in medicine bye bye